Hey guys, Jessica here. So today I want to talk to you about a breast pump that I'm starting to see be posted in a couple of different breastfeeding groups. And that is this wearable here. This one is the Serone brand. It's also being sold under the brand name Misa, which does have other wearable pumps that have been previously good performers. This is catching people's attention because this duckbill design is making people think of the Willow Go, which makes sense. If you look at the design, you've got this big round duck bill with the little offset. So people are looking at this. It is immediately making them think, oh, that's like the Willow Go, which is where their comments are. But it has something the Willow Go doesn't have. It has a really slim profile and a price point. Right now it's selling between $60 for a single hub and $150 for the double. But I keep seeing sales that are putting it down at $110 to $120. So 110 to 120 for a wearable breast pump with a slim profile. It doesn't have, you know, it has the motor on top, but it sits down completely in the bra. It would be mostly invisible while pumping, unlike the cups with the pump motors on top. This, I see why people are interested in this, but we always talk about breast pump science as something that we're using to prove that something works. Well, in this case, we're going to use breast pump science to see, will this work? And we can actually use breast pump science to say, no, this design and this program fundamentally do not make sense for breastfeeding mothers to use. Now, where this gets really tricky, you can have a pump that by all metrics that we can measure is not a good pump. And then you can still have some people that are responding well for it. I have some people that are so responsive to any and every pump that if you put a pump on them, if there's any type of nipple stimulation, we're going to get milk. But that doesn't mean that it's fundamentally a good pump or that it's something that we want the average breastfeeding mother to consider because yeah, sure, it's 60 to $120 on average, but that 60 to $120 is a lot of money that could have spent elsewhere to address a need that if you buy a pump that doesn't work for you, you're just kind of out of luck. So let's take a look at this and see what the actual science tells us about the design. So the design is pretty simple. You've got a silicone flange here that kind of snaps in place around the rim. You've got this plastic dish here that's holding the milk, and then you've got a duck bill inside. When you are looking at the flange opening, this is a 27 millimeter hole, which is on the bigger side. That's going to be too big for most people, but there's only 18 millimeters between the opening and the back of the duck bill. That's not long enough for the average nipple. It's definitely not long enough for the average nipple to expand. It's not even long enough for the average shorter nipple to expand. I can think of a handful of, you know, very flat or very short nipples that lack elasticity that could probably pump with this, but that's, that's definitely not going to be the average mom. So right here we have a problem. Well, with most pumps, the flanges that come with it are too large for the average person, and we use silicone inserts to reduce the size. That's not a possibility here, because what happens is we don't have any inserts shorter than 18 millimeters. We actually don't want inserts shorter than 18 millimeters because we need longer inserts for nipples. The science is not there that we need shorter. But if you were to put an insert in here, it's actually going to make contact back here, and because of the design, this piece back here is actually functioning as a combination diaphragm and backflow protector. So it stops all suction. So that's not an option here. We don't have options to modify this. So if you want to use this pump, this is what you've got. Even a Bojan cushion was too long to fit in there comfortably and unlikely to address the sizing needs for most people because it would only bring it to a 25. So right off the bat, we know this is not going to work for most people. Let's take a look at this backflow protector. The design idea is actually pretty cool. It's a combination diaphragm. So the, the this part back here is actually moving with the suction, but that means it's kind of also going to be in contact with the nipple. So we may see some nipple injuries from this. And then just a standard duckbill design. You've got your bowl. You've got your silicone flange. This part right here is actually really firm, and I do have some concerns that if nipples stretch over it, which they're most certainly going to, they could catch on this rim and we could see some substantial damage there. But you can see the darkening color. Like There is a plastic reinforcer in there to help hold this firm. 
the appeal here is that this is going to be really simple to wash. And I do see that we're having a lot more pumps hit the market and a lot more accessories that are talking about how easy they are to wash. We've gotten a lot of pumps on the market in the last two years that require very, very careful assembly, very, very careful washing in order to use them. And there's a lot of user pushback against that. Moms are not looking for a complicated routine for their pump in order to make it work. They just want it to work. So this design holds some promise, but as it stands now, this design is an issue. But let's take a look at the program on it. Okay, so this particular motor was running three modes. From what I can tell, there's two different versions of this motor out there. They appear to be mostly identical, but the difference is most of them have three modes and some of them have four. This one happened to have four. So you've got your stimulation, your expression, one they call massage, where you can kind of see it holds at the top. That is going to bring the nipple right into contact with the back of that backflow duckbill situation. That's going to be a problem. So I wouldn't even think that mode is useful. And then over here on the bottom left is what they call energy saving mode. All I could tell is that it slowed the pump down a little bit while reaching about the same suction levels as expression mode. So I don't really think that's actually super useful. What I did find though, is that it maxed out at 75 MMHG on stimulation. And on expression, we got to about 170 to 174 in the three different modes. The reality is that's not high enough for most people. Because of the way pump motors work, they're going to work at faster speeds, which a lot of people need at lower suction and the higher suction, they're gonna be at, at lower speeds. This means that in order for most people to get enough suction with this pump, they're gonna be at speeds that are less than optimal. So overall, I don't think this is the pump that people really need to consider yet. The other issue, there's no replacement parts. I tried to contact the sellers of the various forms of this and to see, you know, how much are these replacement parts? Are they even available? And it's been radio silence. You know, in this case, I did buy this one and the seller just isn't responding to tell me if they can even sell me a replacement part. So this is a really fun pump to look at, but this is not one that I think moms need to run out and buy. If what you're looking for is a slim profile, which is really the main thing that this pump had going for it was it did have a slim profile. We have other pumps with a slim profile at a similar price point that we can talk about that we have a lot better you know, design with it. We have options to manage the sizing. We have options to help you optimize even at that price point. So please don't run out and buy this one. The science is telling me this is not a great breast pump. So hopefully this helps somebody to figure this out before they've got a $120 paperweight.